Okay, in order to voice lead pentatonics, we need more than one chord. So what I've done is I've picked a three chord progression, A, D, and E, and I'm staying on each chord for four measures. Um, and for each one of those chords, I have to pick a corresponding major pentatonic scale. So for A, I'm using the A major pentatonic. For D, I'm using the D major pentatonic. For E, I'm using the E major pentatonic. Um, you get it. So the whole idea of voice leading these things is to get a level of freedom where we can move in and out of these scales. We're really targeting the changes without any kind of hiccups. So a lot of times we only know how to start a scale from the root or from this one point on the neck. So we want to get free of that and be able to ascend and descend freely without anything kind of stopping us as we go. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to master every position on the neck here of doing this. So I'm going to start here with an A major pentatonic in root position. And I'm going to play four measures of quarter notes. OK, and then I'm going to switch to D. So no matter where I am on the fretboard, no matter what string I'm on, I have to envision the closest D major pentatonic and move to the closest note of that. OK, so let's review our three different mode scales in this position. For the A chord, I'm using root position. The closest one for D is actually mode number four, which starts on the fifth. So same note, but the relationship to the chord is different. This A is now acting as the fifth. When we switch to the E chord, the closest major pentatonic we can use is mode number three off of the third, the G sharp. Okay, you see I don't have to leave that bit of the neck at all to make sure I'm targeting these changes. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick quarter notes. I'm going to keep track of how many measures I'm doing, ascending and descending. And when the time comes to change, I'm going to stop. I'm going to think about that next mode, think about that next note, and then continue. So I got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, now I have to stop, envision that next mode, and what's the next note I could play that's going to keep me moving in the same direction? And that's that B there. So that's going to be my one of the next four measures. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, Now I'm changing to an E. I have to envision the E, the next note, which is G sharp. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then I'm back to A, so I have to picture that mode. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So you see, without even playing with the track, you could still hear when the chords are changing because I'm playing the correct scale for each chord. So you can identify the harmonic rhythm or when the chords are moving um, just by when the scale is changing. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to play this or voice lead these scales over a 12-bar blues in all five of our positions.